What's up guys, Bloodshed here. Welcome to the Barbarian Starter Build Guide for Diablo 3, Patch 271 and Season 24. In these videos, we take you from like zero to hero, do a lot of talking. It's more of a theorycraft video. Take you from zero to hero, from level one, all the way up to end game build recommendations. These videos are heavily based on you having the challenge rift bag. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check out my website, bloodshed.com, so you can know how to take advantage of it every single season. Also try to put a link in the description of the video if I can. We have a full season start talking about the follower system, ethereals, the tier list that we just put out. Everything's there, just hover over the Diablo section, go to the main page, and then you have individual class pages as well. I also have timestamps and chapters on the timeline of the video itself. So if you could please leave me a like on the video, I would really appreciate that also. But let's go ahead and get into it, guys. For Barbarian Level 1 Blood Shard recommendations, you're definitely going to go for Bracers yet again here in the season. Uh, this time around, we get the Immortal King, the IK set. The IK set gives you basically Perma Wrath the Berserker and Permanent Ancients as long as you use a Spender. And what do you get at level one? Some nice ass spenders, 500% to Seismic Slam and 500% to Hammer the Ancients. If you do get a legendary, you're basically guaranteed to get one of these two. And I'm gonna give you build guides based on getting those two items. And if you're for some reason you're not lucky, you get nothing, I'm gonna give you a build guide for a whirlwind, a whirlwind start also, like a two-handed whirlwind build here in the video. So that's what you're going to do with your blood shards. If you go ahead and get one of these right away, you can definitely YOLO and try to get a Band of Might at level one, as it would be insane. And you could probably tank, you know, T6 while leveling. It's really, really powerful. And you'd be pretty much set up for the season. If you don't want to take that much risk, because rings do cost more than bracers do, you can play it safe and go for Pox Faults. Pox Faults give you a 550% weapon dot and that will scale with an ethereal if you get one while leveling and it's easier to massacre bonus with pox folds it just makes your whole life smoother it makes your early game really smooth rocking those pox uh, for leveling skills make sure you bring nerves of steel at level 13. i think barb might be the only class that gets their cheat death really early on so definitely keep that in mind Make sure to use that at level 13 that way if you disconnect maybe you have a chance to survive that fail if you do so in terms of active leveling skills if you get the hoda bracers and you're going to use hoda you get hoda right away at level two so you're probably going to end up using that anyway and you're going to go ahead and use seismic slam if you get the seismic slam bracers you get it a little bit later around level 12 both is okay. I would focus on using the Stagger Rune, which is the first rune for Seismic Slam, as it reduces the Fury cost dramatically from like 30, I believe, yeah, to 22. And for Hoda, I would stick with Rolling Thunder because it has a 22 yard AoE cone. So with Hoda, it has a small AoE unless you use Rolling Thunder. And then for Seismic Slam, it has a big AoE, but a big Fury cost. So then Stagger helps offset that. So it basically makes this spell almost identical. Whichever pair of bracers you get while leveling. I definitely would use rend for massacre bonuses. If you're just playing with friends doing rifts, not doing massacres, you don't have to use rend. But rend is really powerful. Rend is your friend up until like T7. It can actually do really good damage against like rift guardians and all that. So definitely I would carry it just for that. But if you're in a group, you don't need to. You got a lot of people working together. Since you were good boys and girls and saved your challenge rift bag, you're able to do a weapon upgrade in the cube, right? Remember with the challenge rift bag, we can max our professions, do a weapon upgrade, and you can choose between two good options. We have one-handed mighty weapons and two-handed mighty weapons. Um, it's really up to you, whatever you choose. They both have you know, positives and negatives. They both have you know, a percentage chance to get something you need versus something you don't need. I would go for one-handers because if you get like Ambo's Pride for Whirlwind or you get Fjord Cutter with Seismic Slam or Remorseless with Hoda, you know, you can try to pair your legendaries together and it just seems to make the most sense to me to go for one-handers. But you can make a case for both. It's really up to you. It's all RNG, whatever RNG Jesus decides to give you. If you don't know, we have a seasonal theme called Ethereals. It's a Diablo 2 theme. So you can see Barb gets three different items to choose from right here in this row grandfather being one of the best ethereals so barbs have a lot to look forward to the grandfather basically carries all the builds brings all the builds like up a tier basically whirlwind hoda seismic slam frenzy Liebquake, 
um, IK Hoda, right? If you can fit it, like everything gets boosted because of how strong the barbarian ethereals are. So definitely it's a good season to play barb. One thing to note about ethereals, there's no offhand ethereal. You can use an ethereal in your offhand only if you're monk or barbarian. So as a barb, you have a very special opportunity to wear an ethereal in your offhand. Your blood, if I get an ethereal, why would I put it in my offhand? Well, you can get ethereals while leveling. So like, let's say you get an ethereal at level 15, by the time you hit 30, the weapon damage is gonna be low um, in relation to how strong the mobs are. So other classes might just have to destroy it or put it in the bank or whatever they wanna do with it. But as a barb or a monk, you can actually just put it in your offhand, right? Your secondary like this. You can put your like rare item or whatever legendary you have here. And then you can put your ethereal in your offhand, right? Where other classes can't do it because they're just weapons. All the ethereals are some kind of sword or dagger or something like that. Ethereals have one random passive and one weapon affix in based on a small item pool. So there's a really good chance you'll get a sick ethereal. If you get one while leveling, you're one of the lucky ones. I salute you. <laughs> when it comes down to crafting your item with reduced level requirement, I would make a one-headed mace this time around, just in case you happen to get the ethereal we just talked about, you can put that in your offhand, right? Cause you're probably gonna wanna rock at level 70 with reduced level requirement and an ethereal. If you don't know what I'm talking about, about items with reduced level requirement on it, check out the video description. There's gonna be a video on how to maximize the challenge rift every single season. It's like a 10 minute video all about doing all kinds of tips and tricks with everything. If you want some other leveling tips and tricks, I have a cheat sheet on the website you can check. It reminds you to craft your weapon right here at 40 and you can download the sheet. Talks about the best stats for early game, What torments and all that good stuff. This is all stuff that we've been doing for a long time, but it's good to have a quick reminder because we only do get a couple seasons a year. So it's nice to have it on hand if you want it, it's there. The first starter we're gonna talk about today is the Whirlwind Barbarian starter build. Now, obviously there's nothing in the cube. No Paragon was used. I didn't use these max level gems. The cube just puts it in there. You can see right here when I was testing, I was using baseline gems. But anyway, um, this is all about Whirlwind and Ren spam with this particular play style. This is if you don't get any bracers, by the way, right? We're going to show you the other builds if you get the other two. I'll slowly go through it here. So you have the play style. You basically just hold down Whirlwind. You have plenty of resource using Mighty Weapons here and using the Lightning Rune, which is very important. It gives you fury when you're hitting enemies. And you can see I even have Unforgiving. It's giving me fury, right, to kind of sustain that resource it's even further enforced by the helm gem you know reduce all resource costs by 12.5 percent so you should have no problem doing t1 this is basically to get you into your hadrix set don't forget to use a mighty belt with barb because you're going to be getting life per fury it's one of the strongest heals in the game using life per fury and all three builds we're going to talk about today use a lot of fury so definitely make one of those don't make a regular belt it's a mighty belt the next two builds um for starters are basically identical one's hoda and one seismic slam there's very minimal differences to the builds they're basically about just getting as much resource as possible to be able to use your spender more often so if you get those low level hoda bracers you can use them all the way at 70 or you can go ahead and put them in the cube if you like i prefer just holding them that way i can cube a weapon affix if i get it as weapons you know, you can outscale, they're not as strong, you know, to hold versus a pair of bracers still have, you know, 500% damage, whether it's at level 16 or at level 70. So it does its purpose. Either way, here's the build we did. Cleave to give you that extra fury when swiping. Hammer the Ancients with the Fire Rune to do tons of damage. Merciless Assault, Battle Rage, here you go. And then same thing, your Eye of Unforgiving just for that extra resource. Superstition gives us extra resource when we take um, damage from a ranged or elemental attack, which is basically all the time, right? <laughs> Here's the Seismic Slam version of the build. Let me just kind of skim through it here. Again, I like these passives exactly. You can see I'm even using Weapons Master with Mighty Weapons. That's another reason why we're using Mighty Weapons with Weapons Master. Weapons Master gives us fury per hit everything's basically based on getting us that damn resource so we don't just become stranded somewhere off in a rift you know we don't want to have to call triple a to come get us once you go through and you talk to hadrig you do your season journey you collect your four-piece hadrig's gift 
Um, there's a really interesting thing with the Immortal King set. It's actually one of the best starts because of how powerful it is. Okay, so Call the Ancients lasts until they die with a two piece. It's just really, really good. The Ancients can give you two amazing things. The together as one rune, which is 50% damage reduction, which is like having double unity on your character, right? And Ancients Fury, uh, gain four fury every time an Ancient deals damage. So you basically can have really tankiness or unlimited resource. You might choose one or the other depending on if you're playing soft core or hardcore. So just keep that in mind. So it might not seem like much, but the Ancients are badass and they hit really hard actually, like little baby pets. The four piece reduce the cooldown of Wrath of the Berserker and call the Ancients by three seconds for every 10 fury you spend. So if you're doing the whirlwind start, you're constantly spending fury. You know, if you focus on the right passives, you know, the right helm gem to get your resource back. You should be spending tons of resource with Hoda, Seismic Slam, or Whirlwind to have Perma Wrath Berserker right away, right? You pretty much can have Perma Wrath Berserker. If you notice it not being up full time, then you can maybe add some more cooldown. Maybe you drop the reduced resource cost gem for the cooldown gem, whatever you gotta do to maybe roll one or two things to kind of fix it. But you should have Perma Wrath Berserker even with like 10% cooldown. Let me go through the four four slash six piece whirlwind start. And then we're gonna go through the four slash six piece Hoda start for you guys. There might be a few changes with the builds themselves. Like you definitely want that. You can see I have Bunable Cathos here now. Still got the belt with the, you know, life per fury. Here comes the seismic slam play style. Again, very similar to the other builds, but just so you guys have exactly what I was using here. I might do a couple of short demos um, with GR20 clears for you guys. Again, we have nothing in the cube. I have no Paragon used in the testing, no legendary gems, just the four piece IK set with Whirlwind. We're not even using those Hoda bracers yet. So this is just if you don't get the bracers for whatever reason. So I'm just gonna pop all my cooldowns to start here, charge in and just Whirlwind away. I will rend when I feel comfortable, like when I'm around big packs like this. Charge in, manually cast Whirlwind. You don't have like ambos or anything. There's no like auto rends. So you just have to kind of do it on your own here, which is not a big deal. Just like my grandfather before him used to use rend manually. He didn't have auto rends. <laughs> the, the old time method of actually manually casting things. But you can see we're already pulling ahead with literally just the four piece. You know, having Perma Wrath the Berserker up is insane, right? We have 12% um, cooldown right now, which is probably just like one item from our gear or whatever, we have minimal stuff. Um, if you're playing soft core, you can also use the Enchantress for more cooldown as well. So that's pretty cool. We just took that explosion. You know, having that 10% crit from Wrath, we also have crit using this Battle Rage rune that gives us more crit. Like you actually crit a lot, right? And then you're doing a lot more damage also on top of that, as crits do more damage. So you can see you'll have no no problem starting with Barb, just literally walking through content if you have the right build and you fix your main problem. The main problem for IK is gonna be resource because you need to spend that resource to get your cooldown right for Wrath of Berserker. So hopefully you guys get some sick ethereals with the build. Hopefully you get some complimenting legendaries or like Band of Might, you'd be able to tank really high really early on. Next, let's jump into a rift with a four piece Hoda, right? The four piece buff with just the Hoda Bracers. It should perform equally to Seismic Slam as they have similar damage and everything like that. Again, we're just gonna pop our cooldowns and then charge in and, but this time we're just Hoda smashing, right? So it's just, Dash and smash, dash, smash. I like Merciless Assault because you get a little bit of cooldown, right? And um, it's free resource. You can use Leap if you want or Sprint. Sprint costs resource, that's why I don't use it, but if you get like Reaper's Wraps or you get something to fix your resource early, maybe you can go a different direction with it. But you can see it was good with no multiplier with just the four piece, you know? Now with a multiplier on top of it, like you're just destroying content. And IK does really well early game. You'd be able to farm on like CA T7 to T11. 
until you get what you need to get, right? So you just stay there. Say, stay on T11 until you get like the items you need. And you can always make a level one barbarian and roll for rings like we showed you earlier today. Remember, there's only a two options in the item pool. You can either get like a Leorix ring or a Bandamite. So you can, nothing's stopping you from making another level one barb, rolling your shards on it, getting that Bandamite, putting it in the stash, logging into your main, grabbing it, and then boom, you have 80% damage reduction. All right, Blood, now what? I did my GR20 clear. I got my six piece bonus. Where do I go from here? Well, like we just talked about, you're gonna speed farm whatever you can effectively, whether that's T7, T8, T9, T11, just speed farm. You wanna be doing riffs and griffs in like five minutes or less. You wanna complete a speed build. So you can go on my website, scroll down to speed builds here for key farming. You got Whirlwind, Frenzy, and Leapquake. They're all gonna be updated before the season goes live. I have most of the push builds done. I just need to go now get down into the bounty builds and other speed builds, the low level speed builds. Complete one of these bad boys, maybe depending on what drops you get. You can also um, run IK Hoda. You can use like maybe Ingeom with Immortal King to give you some sort of speed until you get Whirlwind basically. Whirlwind's the best, it says the best right here. So that would be your target goal. And then from there, you should be able to speed farm even higher tiers, like say T14 to T16 with one of these guys. And then pick whatever build you want for the season. I'm gonna be playing a lot of Frenzy Barb, even though it's only A tier. It's amazing, really strong. 140 plus GR capable, so is Leapquake. Seismic Slam is really badass as well. So whatever you wanna play, Whirlwind Rend is gonna be the A plus tier. We have our tier list set up on the site, so you can check it out as well. But yeah, it's really up to you, right? It's just about getting into those speed builds early, so then you can get resources, get items, get DBs, get blood shards, so then fund the creation of a push build. Final thoughts for Barb, I would say, damn, it gets one of the best ethereals in the game with the grandfather. It really does boost everything like we were saying. Really impactful, feels good, nostalgic, and it just kicks a lot of ass with a lot of builds. I mean, if you ever wanted to, I'm gonna be playing two-handed frenzy, right, for the memes, because it's a lot of fun. In terms of group play, Z-Barb is always taken in every aspect of the game from pushing to speed runs, low level runs. You can always fit in a barb as they just make the group better. They increase the, the group's movement speed. They make the group immune to crowd control. They can chain elites, pull them with the, pull the elites with the group easy, you know, scout ahead. Tons of mobility. Z barbs are just gods of support, right? Whirlwind's not like the strongest build in the game, but I mean, how far do you need to go, right? Like. Uh, the freaking uh, A, A plus, S, and S plus tier are all 140 plus viable builds. So it really depends on what you put in, how many keys you're willing to farm, how far you're willing to push the potential of everything, right? At a certain point, it doesn't even matter anymore because you're gonna get your season journey complete, you're gonna have fun, and each class, if you miss a few seasons, is broken down by individual leaderboards. So. No matter what you decide, you're gonna only be competing against other IK barbs, other savages, other lawn barbs here, right? So it just really depends on what you wanna do. Barb's a great choice, lots of fun, lots of build variation this season. And that's it, that's gonna be all for me today. Thank you guys so much for listening to me blab on for a lot of minutes. Hopefully I can edit this video down a little bit further. <laughs> um, Good luck on the season if you're listening to this before the season. Again, there's timestamps so you can skip ahead, skip to whatever specific starter build you need in the video. You don't have to like watch through the whole thing. The website's still getting updated again, so don't hate me until it's done, right? Wait, wait, wait. Feel free to tell me on stream if there's anything I missed. That's gonna be all for me today. This is the bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.